Hi, I'm Sam Hawley, coming to you from Gadigal Land. This is ABC News Daily. As the saying goes, all that glitters is not gold. And that's certainly the case at the Perth Mint, which is in the business of selling the precious metal. An investigation has found that holes in the Mint's compliance regime could have left it open for criminals to target it to launder money. Today, Four Corners reporter Angus Grigg on why that could end up costing taxpayers millions of dollars. Angus, let's talk about gold. We've had a a really long history with gold in this country. We like it a lot, (laughs) and I'm sure we'd all like to have more of it. But what sort of investment is gold today? Yeah, gold is really an investment for troubled times. So Mm. when people are worried that the stock market's going to crash or that uh, bond prices are going to rise significantly, they will often uh, invest in gold. Mm. Gold prices have hit an eight-month high. There's been a resurgence of interest in gold and prices have been on the rise. It's seen as a safe haven asset, that it is uh, safer also than having your money in the bank. Uh, you can put it under your bed, you can hide it in a bank vault, uh, you can you know, bury it in the backyard. And yeah. so it's seen as the ultimate safe haven asset. Yeah, so buy a block of gold and chuck it in the back of your cupboard and save it for a rainy day. Sounds pretty good. Yeah, the other thing I would add is that um, gold is an international currency. It is recognised around the world. So if uh, you need to trade it with someone overseas, it is recognised. And uh, so that that gives it another element of sort of having international traceability and tradeability. Uh, the other thing about it is that you can melt it down and you can recast it into a new form and it's virtually untraceable. Mm, and you can turn it into, of course, jewellery. You know, gold rings, gold necklaces, all that sort of thing. You can walk around with a fair bit of money on your body. Absolutely. So there's a fellow in Perth called Dane Brakovich, and he's a former sergeant at arms of the Hells Angel motorcycle gang in Perth. And he is a very notorious figure in Perth. He has uh, been in and out of court in the last uh, few years. Today, there was a heavy police presence at the Perth Magistrates Court for Brakovich's appearance when he pleaded guilty to a charge of fighting in public. He has these very distinctive facial tattoos literally all over his face and most of his body. Right. You'll often see photos of Dane Brakovich with uh, a gold chain uh, that is worth $216,000. Mm-hmm. Now, he told the court uh, when he was there recently that that's how much it's worth. And he actually sent us the valuation to prove that it was worth $216,000. He's also got a series of gold rings um, and he wears these very chunky gold rings on each finger and they're worth probably upwards of about $50,000 just worth of uh, gold rings on his hands as well. Oh, some rings. Okay, now just tell me a bit more about him because you have watched some CCTV footage of him at a gift shop at the Perth Mint and this is all still about gold. Yeah, so in June last year, Dane Brakovich walked into the Perth Mint gift shop and he purchased uh, $27,000 worth of gold. Now, we know this uh, because under freedom of information uh, laws, we were able to obtain the CCTV footage of Mr Brakovich waiting in line at the Perth Mint. Okay, so I've got to ask this before we move on, because when you think of a mint, you don't think of a place that sells gold. So what is a Perth Mint doing selling gold? Yeah, so you sort of have two types of mints. You have the Royal Australian Mint in Canberra, which mints coins and things like that. Mm -hmm. And then you have someone like the Perth Mint, which uh, does mint some commemorative coins. But it's really the main thing that the Perth Mint does is it, it melts down or takes in raw gold and it refines it or processes it into gold bullion. And so the biggest part of its business uh, is making this gold bullion. And indeed, last year, it sold $20 billion worth mm. of gold. Gosh. I've just come to cash them in because the price is the right price. So there you go. There's 10 ounces there. So um, How much is all this worth? About 27. $27,000. Yeah. It's mint marked by the Perth Mint. You can see it there. So the Perth Mint is owned by the West Australian government. It is the only mint in the world 
which enjoys a government guarantee. Last year, it had revenue of about $22 billion, but its actual profit margin is relatively small, and it made about uh, $40 million in profit last year, which was actually a pretty good result. Mm. You wouldn't say it's a highly profitable enterprise for the West Australian government. Okay, let's go back to your bikey then from Perth, who's been there. He's been buying gold from the Mint. You found that out through FOI documents. What does that say to you? What did you then find out about all this? So Dane Brakovich has a criminal record. He is a known entity to police and he's a former member of an outlaw motorcycle gang. So we're not suggesting that Dane Brakovich was uh, using the proceeds of crime to buy that gold. What we're saying very clearly is that the Perth Mint had a very strong obligation to ask him questions Mm. about where that money come from and to ensure that it wasn't criminally tainted. And it failed to do this. And that leaves, or that suggests, a very large gap in its anti-money laundering compliance. Sorry, can you hear me there? So we're doing a story on the Perth Mint and we understand that you um, might have bought a gold bar from them. Yeah, okay. Um, Cool. And so you're going to, do you know how much you bought, like roughly what it was worth? So it so it was a as a ten ounce bar worth about twenty seven thousand dollars. Okay, Dane, thanks very much. The point we're making is that if you're not asking questions of someone who is so recognisable, so high profile as Dane Brakovich, mm. then what other checks is the Perth Mint not making? Right, and then you obviously went about having a look at what else was going on. So what did you find, Angus? Yeah, so what we discovered was that uh, the Perth Mint has had a relationship with the Bank of Cyprus for a number of years, a well-known Mediterranean tax haven, which basically means that uh, customers of the Bank of Cyprus were able to buy and store gold in the Perth Mint. Now, your listeners would probably understand that Cyprus is best known for being Russia's bank, effectively. Mm. It is a well-known jurisdiction that has allowed wealthy Russians, Russian oligarchs, those connected with the regime in Moscow to hide money. And so that is, for a government-owned mint like the Perth Mint, that's a very strange relationship to have. Why would you seek that out? And Mm. indeed, why would you allow customers of a tax haven bank with known links to the regime in Moscow to hold gold in your mint. The thing that we really discovered that was probably the most shocking was that the Perth Mint themselves in documents we've seen admitted that they didn't run any checks on Bank of Cyprus customers to see what, if any, links they had to uh, government officials, so-called politically exposed persons. So this is a really major breach of its uh, anti-money laundering obligations. Mm. It shows a major gap in its compliance regime. And it's something that uh, Austrac, which is investigating, will absolutely no doubt uh, be dealing with. Mm, Okay, so Austrac has an investigation underway into the Perth Mint. You've been speaking to a former AFP investigator about this. What's he had to say? Yeah, so John Chevis told us that if the Perth Mint is not running proper checks on who its customers are and who's the ultimate beneficial owners of the gold in its vaults, then you could have all sorts of people who are who the Perth Mint is holding gold on behalf of. And that includes, um, you know, despots, dictators, money launderers, mm. fraudsters, those who are evading tax, as well as, um, you know, drug dealers and the like. So in 2017, I was doing some research, trawling the internet, um, looking for ways to set up anonymous companies and thereby gain access to anonymous bank accounts. And during that process, I tripped over... Uh, uh, a particular entity that had links to Perth Mint and, in fact, had Perth Mint uh, on its own website. It had a, a picture of Perth Mint and a, an explanation of how you could hold government-backed gold with Perth Mint. So was your concern that the Perth Mint could be facilitating money laundering? That's exactly what my concern was. The, my concern, more specifically, was that the Perth Mint might be holding gold and other uh, precious metals on behalf of people who were potentially criminals, drug uh, cartels, despots from around the world. 
Mm, so I assume the Mint has now cut ties with the Bank of Cyprus. Formally, yes, they have cut ties with the Bank of Cyprus. They said their relationship with them ended in 2020, but they wouldn't specifically say whether they'd closed individual customer accounts. And this is the big thing. You could stop the formal relationship with the Bank of Cyprus, but then it would also be incumbent upon you to close those individual customer accounts. And the Perth Mint won't say whether they've done that or not. And our documents suggest that there were still customer accounts for the Bank of Cyprus as late as June last year. Some of the other information we have from law enforcement authorities paints a very clear picture that the Perth Mint was targeted by international fraudsters and money launderers Mm. uh, to move their illicit money around the world. Mm, Okay, and you mentioned there's an investigation underway by Austrac. So what's happening with that and what could be the consequences for the Perth Mint? Yeah, it's actually really serious. So Austrac in August last year announced that they were having a sort of formal investigation. And so after that, it'll be up to Austrac to decide what, if any, punishment could say that they'll need to spend money upgrading their systems, upgrading their compliance. Now, this is not cheap. We've already seen this with the big banks. This can run to tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars in upgraded compliance. The second thing, and this is the really big one, is the fine. And once again, what we know from the banks is that fine can be from anywhere from, you know, half a billion dollars to more than a billion dollars. There is a slight question of whether or not one arm of government would uh, impose a fine on another arm of government. Because that would be the Western Australian government paying money to the Commonwealth. Yes, that's right. And ultimately, who is going to foot the bill for this fine or these upgraded compliance will be the West Australian taxpayers. Mm, It's a lot of money out of their coffer. So what next do you think, Angus? What will be the outcome of this? It can't continue like this, obviously. Well, I think it's pretty embarrassing for the West Australian government and for the Premier Mark McGowan, who was actually responsible for the Perth Mint Mm. for four years until very recently. And if a very large fine is levied against them, then I think it'll have some real political consequences. So do you think it's appropriate that criminals have been able to buy gold at the Perth Mint? I don't, I don't. I don't know what you're referring to, uh, but I do know is the mint is going through a whole range of um, measures to improve its practices. Do you think it's appropriate that the Perth Mint, a WA government-owned organisation, is dealing with high-risk clients who are now being investigated for money laundering? I don't know what you're referring to. Thank Can you. I ask you Thank one you. more question? One more question. Angus Grigg is a reporter with Four Corners. You can watch his report on iView. The Perth Mint says it takes compliance issues very seriously and is working with the regulator to rectify any shortcomings. As you'd know, interest rates have gone up again for the 10th consecutive time. We had a look at how big banks profit from rising rates on February the 27th. Have a listen, that's in your feed. This episode was produced by Flint Duxfield and Chris Dengate, who also did the mix. Our supervising producer is Stephen Smiley. I'm Sam Hawley. Thanks for listening.